Hello everybody and welcome. I'm going to try and round out the shape matching class by first of all adding the ability to draw filled circles. Next time we'll probably work on drawing filled polygons. To get started here, we're back in the game class. Uh, this is where we left off. We have a polygon that has been uh, rotated and transformed using our transformation structure. Now I want the ability to draw filled circles, so I'm going to leave that all like it is and just go to the shape class and let's start drawing some filled circles. Here's our draw circle and you can see we're going down here, we're, we're going through every point, we're uh, rotating by a certain amount of radians to get points all across the circle and then drawing lines between them. Draw circle fill is going to be relatively similar. Let's go ahead and create a new function for that. This is going to be a draw circle fill function. We're going to want an X and a Y. That'll be the center of the circle. We want a radius. We want to ask how many points to use. And then we also want to pass in a color. When we're drawing the circle down here, you can see we didn't actually ensure the space that we needed at the beginning. Because every time we draw this line here, it's actually ensuring the space to draw each line. When we fill this circle, we're going to have to ensure that, that we have the space before we start drawing the circle. Because we're going to be doing this stuff directly. We're going to be adding the indices and the vertices directly right here. First of all, let's ensure that we've started batching. Now let's figure out the number of vertices that we need to draw. I'm going to say that... And actually, to get that information, first we need to define the... Just like we did in this circle drawing function, we need to define a minimum and maximum points. I'm actually going to copy... Well, I'm actually going to copy a lot of this code because we need this. We need to not only calculate the number of points, but we need to calculate the, the angle of rotation. We need to pre-calculate the sine and cosine and then the beginning a x and a y. So let's just copy all of that and bring it over. After we ensure space, we're going to do this. I'm going to make a variable here. I'm going to call this shape vertex count. Okay, and the shape vertex count is just going to be the number of points, but clamped by the minimum and maximum points that we're going to allow. Now, I also need the shape triangle count, and that's how many triangles we're going to need to draw this shape. Calculating the number of triangles we need to draw the circle is a little bit interesting. Let's go back to our drawing program here. I'm going to draw a simple circle, and we'll just put a few points up here to define what our circle looks like. Six points that define our circle. Okay, let's draw some lines. So close enough, that's a general idea of what our circle is going to look like if we had six points. The number of triangles that you need to fill any kind of simple convex or concave polygon is defined by a formula, and that's just the number of sides. Uh, we'll say the number of sides minus two is equal to the number of triangles. Complex polygons are polygons that are self-intersecting or have holes, possibly. Simple polygons don't have holes and the lines don't intersect, but they can be concave or convex. And so the number of sides is the same as the number of points of the polygon. In this case, we have six points. So six minus two will give us the number of triangles, which is four. Back in our code, we can just tell this that the triangle count is going to be the shape vertex count minus two. And now that we have that, we can also calculate the index count. And the index count is just the definition of all the triangles. So back in our draw program, in order to fill this with triangles, let's go ahead and draw what that's going to look like. Let's just define one of these points as the zero point or the starting point. So we'll say this is zero, and we're going to say it goes around in clockwise winding order like this. So if this is zero, we're going to start here. We're going to count out two vertices and go there. That'll be our first triangle. Then we'll go to the next vertex will be our next triangle from zero, and then to the next vertex we are next triangle. And you can see we end up with four triangles, right? Just like our equation says here. Uh, the index count is just going to be the number of triangles we have times three. We can just go in here and say the index count is going to be the shape triangle count times three. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and just ensure that we have enough space. Pass in the vertex count and the index count. Uh, we're going to go ahead and calculate the indices of each one of these triangles. We can go ahead and picture this like, uh, we'll just, let me just draw, draw the indices of the vertices. So that'll be vertex 0, vertex 1, uh, vertex 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we can see the first triangle is going to be 0, 1, and 2. The next one's going to be 0, 
two, and three. We're just going around like this. Okay, then we'll go around like this. Since a circle is just a convex polygon, it's real easy to just go around and triangulate this very quickly. Let's make a loop that's going to loop through the number of triangles we have. And for each triangle, we're going to define three indices. We're going to have the indices from our class. We're going to have the index count, which we're going to increment every time. It will be equal to some number. And we're going to have three of those. So for every triangle, we're going to define three indices in our index array. And every time we define one, we're going to increment the index count to the next one. Now the first one is going to be easy. That's always going to be zero. We always start at zero and go to the next one, right? Zero down to the next one, zero down to the next one. If you remember, we also, just like back here, we have to increment by the vertex count to make sure that we are in the right location in our vertex array. So we're going to say zero plus the vertex count. All of these are going to be some number plus the vertex count. So I'm just going to put that in here. And so now we just need to figure out these two, what goes right here. I need one more number, and I'm going to call that the index. And the index is going to start at 1. What I mean by that is I'm starting at 1. I'm literally at the first vertex after 0. And so then I'm going to have the index, and then I'm going to have the index plus 1. So if I do the index, that'll be here, and then the index plus 1 will be here. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So I'm going to put the index, and I'm going to put the index plus 1. Once we've done that and we finish the loop, let's increment the index by one. Okay, and that'll move us to the next one. And so if we look at the image, the first index was at one, and so we're gonna do one and then index plus one, and then when we finish the loop, we're gonna increment the index, and that'll put us here. And so then we'll do this index, and then index plus one. And we finish that loop, we'll go to the next one. So our next index will be here and then here. Okay, and we'll just keep looping until we go all the way around. That should be everything we need for our indices. Now let's go ahead and define each vertex, the actual vertex. So the first one is actually defined right here, which is just the radius and zero. And let's just loop through all of the vertices. We're gonna store some X and some Y right here. And we're going to add that to our vertex list, which is our vertices list in the class. And every time we add it, we're going to add it to the current vertex count and then increment that vertex count. That'll be equal to the vertex position color. We're going to need a vector 3 to define that. That's going to be our x1 and our y1. And our 0 is going to be 0 always. And we're going to pass in the color. Now here, we need one more thing. We're going to talk about this here. And actually, this here is just going to be our x and our y. So we're just going to pass those through. X1 is going to be AX, and then Y1 is going to be AY. And I need to save those because we're going to do some calculations afterwards here in just a second. But that's good for our first one because we've already calculated where it is. The only thing we need to do now is add in the actual position, the actual center position of our circle, which was defined here. Let's go ahead and add that in right there, and that'll be the Y. Now that we've done this, we need to move on to the next point. So let's just say this is our first point here. We need to rotate now to our next point. And the way we do that is with our rotation formula, just like we did down here with this draw circle. So I'm going to grab that, uh, copy that rotation formula, go ahead and bring it up over here. So now that we've drawn the point, let's move on to the next point. Um, I'm actually going to say this is AX and AY. And the starting point is going to be our X1 and our Y1 that we calculated here. So here, let's put our starting points in right there. X1 over here. And that's why I saved the value of AX and AY to X1 and Y1. Because once we get down here, I need to use that as our starting point here and here to get the new point here. We'll just store that as AX and AY. Then when we go back to the top of the loop, we're going to save that again here and here. Send it to the vertex list and then we're done with that. Okay, so that should be everything to get all the vertices for the circle in. Let's go ahead and now finally increment our shape count to make sure the bachelor knows that we're actually drawing a, another shape. And I think that's everything we need, so let's just go ahead and test out the code and see if we can draw filled circles now. Let's go ahead and draw our filled circle now, so we draw circle fill. Uh, we need an x and a y, so I'm just going to pick some random values here. So let's do a negative 32, negative 32. The radius, I'm going to say, is 64, the number of points. Um, let's pick just a, a relatively low value, so 12. We should be able to see the individual lines on that as it goes around. 
And the color will just be white for now. And that's an integer. All right, so let's just go ahead and see if that works for us. So we'll start that up. Perfect. OK, so now we have a filled circle. Um, it's down 32. And then to the left, 32 right there is a center. And we can definitely see the lines. But it looks like it's working just right. We can add a few more points to this. So let's just make this a high count, 64. Should look like a really smooth circle now. There we go. Should be able to zoom in. And the zoom in feature works. All right, so there's our filled circle drawing routine.